Bioidentical hormones are hormones that are molecularly the same identical structure as the hormones that are made in the human body. It's really redundant because if it's not bioidentical, it's not a hormone. The bioidentical hormones have the same structure as what we've always had in our body, and it doesn't really matter where it comes from, it's just simply that the structure is the same as what God put there in the first place. I believe anyone who's deficient can benefit from bioidentical hormones. And that would apply to virtually every man, woman, and child at some point in their life. As men and women age, inevitably their hormone levels decline. That leads to poor health and a host of health problems leading to the chronic degenerative diseases, the heart disease, high blood pressure, diabetes, obesity, cancer, Alzheimer's disease, arthritis. Often when we're 20 years old, we feel great. We don't have any needs for any supplements. We're just doing wonderful. That condition doesn't last forever. To help prevent those diseases from occurring, we want to keep our metabolism up. And the way we do that is we keep our hormone levels replenished. And we replenish our hormone levels using the same biologically identical hormones that we used to make in adequate amounts when we were younger. If I'm feeling poorly because I'm losing thyroid hormone, I should get thyroid hormone. If a woman, woman is feeling poorly because she's losing estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone, I think she would benefit greatly from using proper doses to optimize her levels or his levels, um, helping them feel better and decreasing the risk of degenerative diseases like heart attack, stroke, and cancer. The dose is going to vary based upon a man's age or a woman's age, uh, their size, their symptoms. Generally, we're going to start at the lower dose and we're going to adjust until the symptoms are relieved. And based on age, we will typically start at higher doses if it's very likely that person will need more. And of course, a real smaller person, we're going to use lower doses. We would assess how do they feel, what the level is, understanding that these um, lab ranges are really reference ranges, they're not perfect. They are population ranges, meaning they describe the population, not the individual. So we need to find where in that range does that individual feel up. Each person is individual, and we titrate according to what the person needs, not according to any set formula. It's very flexible. I believe one should be on bioidentical hormones as long as they want to feel optimally, as long as they want to feel well. Um, in balance, I believe hormones are health promoting. I believe that cancer and other degenerative diseases come from hormone imbalance, hormonal loss in uh, women, particularly low progesterone, estrogen dominance, but even low thyroid, hypothyroidism, increases the risk of heart attack, stroke, and cancer. Hormones that aren't molecularly the same as the hormones made by the human body are really not hormones at all. They're drugs that mimic hormone structure and have similar effects as the hormones, but they also have some serious and deleterious adverse effects. So we're really talking about different terms that describe drug or hormone. So that's why I like to call them, instead of uh, synthetic, I like to call them counterfeit hormones. The term counterfeit hormone refers to a compound that is not identical to a compound we make. Because they counterfeit the hormones that the body makes, but they are not uh, biologically identical and they're dangerous. If you're dealing with something that isn't identical to what your body normally has, you're going to have a different biologic effect. And one analogy would be the difference between a key that fits the lock and one that was made improperly. You know, you've all, we've all had a key made. We get home, we put it in, but it doesn't turn. And similarly, a synthetic product may interact with the system to some degree, but because it's not the identical same compound as what your body makes, you'll see a different result. And you'll frequently block a natural process, and you'll get side effects that are not present with the original hormone. So when you ever you change something from the original design, you really don't know what the results are going to be, but they're not going to be the natural health benefits of the real hormone.
any physician who would instruct a patient that there is no difference between bioidentical hormones and counterfeit hormones is just poorly educated about hormonal structure and about biochemistry. Biologically identical hormones are exactly the same as what your body has always had in it. Synthetic hormones generally refers to something that is different. So when a drug company makes huge changes to a compound, your body knows the difference and I do not believe they have the same effect. Males and females make basically the same hormones. Both sexes make the adrenal hormones, they make the thyroid hormones, they make insulin, which is your sugar hormone. They make sex hormones, testosterone, progesterone, estrogen. The difference is in the ratio. Men make a lot of testosterone, women make a little. Women make a lot of estrogen, men make a little. You can say women make a lot of progesterone, men make almost as much. Men make almost as much progesterone as women. Testosterone is the male hormone. It's the dominant hormone that governs male growth and development and male pattern behavior. Well, testosterone is what makes a boy become a man, so it's producing all those changes. Faster growth, uh, the darker hair, the deeper voice, um, the secondary sex changes. You're also going to notice with men with good levels of testosterone, they have the drive and vigor about them. They have confidence. They're upbeat. They want to take on the world. And when we don't have our testosterone, we typically start seeing those issues decline. We lose our confidence and drive. Affects initiative, assertiveness, sense of well-being, self-confidence, mood, goal orientation, drive, directiveness, decisiveness, and analytical ability. All these particular functions are in the brain. And that's what keeps a man a man as he ages. And we see just the opposite as men age and lose testosterone, again, I believe, faster than it was intended. But if you replenish those hormones, giving testosterone, brain picks back up. So it has a powerful effect on male pattern behavior, male thinking. Men with the highest testosterone tend to be the strongest leaders in society. That's been documented in tests. It also governs and affects our muscle production, our cardiovascular function because it's muscle. It also governs man's romantic moods and his romantic abilities. So all these men that are worried about ED and they say they need Viagra, no man has ED because he has a Viagra deficiency. He's low in testosterone. He needs testosterone supplementation. Testosterone will dramatically increase a man's mental capacity. His initiative, his assertiveness, his self-confidence, his moods, his goals, his directiveness, his decisiveness, his analytical ability. These are brain functions. These are powerful functions that are very important to men, which decline as men age as their testosterone level declines. To a man that's losing testosterone, the benefits are uh, an increase in sex drive, an increase in uh, drive and initiative in general, better decision making, better confidence, uh, better um, muscle tone, cholesterol goes down, fat content goes down. It also helps men develop their muscles, keep their muscles strong, particularly the coronary, uh, the heart and the coronary arteries around the heart. Testosterone is very important for dilating up the coronary arteries. It can be used in men that have poor, poor blood flow to the heart. Uh, it gets rid of angina. It helps increase the blood flow to the heart. It also helps men in their romantic moods and their inclinations. Their libido is improved and their abilities sexually are improved. I believe men's testosterone levels, like other hormone levels, do decline over time. Just as in women, men's hormone levels decline. Again, the key question is when should it start, how fast should it progress, and how far should it go? Testosterone peaks in the early 20s, between 20 and 25. After that, there's a slow and an inevitable decline in their testosterone levels. So by the time a man's 40, his testosterone level might be one third of one half what it was in his 20s. By the time he's 50, it's a third of what it was. By the time he's 60, it's a quarter of what it was. And I don't believe a man in his 30s, 40s, or 50s ought to be losing so much testosterone that they're losing their manliness and they're feeling poorly. What they really need is to have their hormones replenished using testosterone. That's a tremendously powerful effect on men. It also has a profound effect on cardiovascular function.